Hey everyone, it's the Four Gun Guy, and I'm out at the range. This is the day after Christmas, and I apologize. It's really windy. I hope this isn't going to pick up the wind. Uh, but uh, my Christmas present arrived, and uh, I thought I'd do a quick review on it. It's the Revic rangefinder. This is the BR4 model. And, uh, you know, look, I'll get into some details uh, back at the shop. But I tell you what, uh, I've had the Ranger 1800. Uh, I just did the Sig Sauer Kilo 5. Both good rangefinders, right? In my review, I did some ranging. We, we found the targets. But I will tell you that out uh, when I'm practicing out here, when it's during a match, whether it's at the center fire range, which is where I'm at right now, or the 22 range, which we're going to see in a little bit, I've needed to really be able to hit the target with the rangefinder and get an immediate reading. And I will tell you with the other two, in fact, I think on both of those videos, you saw that it was kind of, you know, uh, hit and miss. It was, uh, they were both great out to say five, 600 yards. Once you got past that, and once I was ranging smaller targets, targets this big on the 22 range at 100, 150, 200 yards, those range finders kind of fell off a little bit. Uh, so I think we're getting down to the what is it that you really need the range finder for conversation. And if you're going to shoot PRS, if you're going to shoot the 22 matches, you really need to have something that's going to give you an exact reading that you're not going to double check, uh, double guess. And uh, I think the Revic is it. I've already played with this thing. It's awesome. Um, so let's get some views through this, some ranges through it. I'll hook my uh, uh, mobile phone up to it. We'll see what we can get. Okay, I've got this thing hooked up. It's not the best, but uh, let's see if we can get some, uh, some uh, ranges through this thing. I'm going to start the video now on the phone. So I'll sync these up when I get back to the, to the editing room. And you can see uh, it's a 10x uh, rangefinder. So it's got uh, pretty good uh, uh, zoom capabilities on it. Um, let's get some up close targets here. The letter N is in November. Let's see what we get. 402, and I know that's 400, and I'm about two yards behind the uh, uh, the car here what, that we usually shoot off of. Let's go out to 500. Now I want you to notice that when I'm clicking this, you'll see a dot in between those two bars. That dot is what's hitting the target, and I'm all over the place with this, but there's 500. Let's go to, I'll try to stabilize a little better. Let's go to 650, 655, which makes sense from where I'm at. Let's go to the 700, I got the berm there. 706, yep. Let's go out to, I think that's the 800, 805, yep. Look how fast these things are coming back. I mean, this is pretty impressive. 852, that's the 850 rack. Let's go out here. 1102, that is the 1100. I don't even know what I'm looking at here because it's a thousand. That's the thousand yard rack. Wow. I mean, this thing's pretty, pretty awesome here. All right. Well, we're at the range here the 22 range, and now I'm going to take some uh, video through the uh, range finder. I will tell you, you're going to press the menu button all the time until you get used to this thing. I'm pressing the menu button as, as the target button. This is really, in my opinion, kind of a poor design here. I really like the range finders that have the menu button on the side so you know you're not going to touch the menu button when you go to take a ranging. It's just something I'm going to have to get used to. But other than that, I love this thing. But let me make sure I'm pressing the right button here. And now I'm going to record. And here we go. 
This is the 50 yard zero, so let's do a recording there. Yep, 51 because we're a little off of it. Let's go to, uh, let me see if I can zoom in just a pinch here because I want to look at some of these other things. Um, I think there's a plate, a rack here. And the problem is, guys, I'm trying to look at this through uh, my phone. So that's not doing it any justice. Let me see if I can get this one. 52 yards, there you go. Let's see if I can get a small one here. 52 yards, that's on that small target. Uh, let's see, let me get the bucket first over here. Bucket 128. I take it up and notice that it's changing as I'm moving this. So I've got it on this near setting and that's the target I'm hitting right now, not the bucket at 128. So that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's come out here to the uh, berm out here. 277, yep, that's what that is. Uh, I believe this target right here to something 258, yep. This one here is further back. 289, 290, yes. Uh, let's see here, let's see if we can get some smaller targets. 84. Now I know where I know where some of the what some of these targets are. These targets are going to be around 200, I think 196. Let me see. 203, 185. And again, I'm just scanning here. 203, yep. That one should be 203, yep. This one in the way in way back there is gonna be two, I wanna say that is a two, well, let me shoot it again here. 203, and then there's one, uh, let's see, that's not 203. This one is 227, yes, 227. And the Sasquatch here, I want to say 212, yep. So this is really picking up these targets very well. And again, I'm trying to look at this through my cell phone, so it's, I'm not really doing it much justice. But I can tell you, it's really picking them up very well. All right, let's get back to the shop. And then I'll be able to sit down and we'll talk about some of the uh, other functionality around the Revic BR-4. If we look at the outside of this, this thing's built like a tank first off. Uh, this is a metal housing. Don't know what metal they've, they've used on it, but it's really nice. Let's start from the back. We'll work our way forward. Uh, the eyepiece, very good eye relief on it, and it does have an adjustable cup, just like a pair of binoculars would. The focus ring is very smooth, but it's firm, so it's not gonna move all over the place. Battery compartment is toolless, so I can just unscrew this, it has a little flange on it there. Unscrew it, change the battery. Uh, moving forward, it does have a quarter inch tripod uh, uh, inlet here, so you can mount this on a tripod with a quarter inch by 20 uh, thread. On the top of it, we've got basically four buttons here. We've got a fire button, which uh, ranges and also gets you out of the menu mode. And then we have the menu button that can get you into a quick menu or a deeper settings menu and two arrows, two buttons on either side of that, which allow you to, to choose up and down and, and move between things. So really good functionality. I'm still getting used to the fire button being kind of way back here. My hand naturally wants to go to the menu button, my index finger. So, but I'll get used to that. Just one of those things you're gonna get used to, that's all. Uh, a lot of the other uh, range finders have the menu button on the side, which I kind of like, but, but I don't know. I, I, I may like this a lot more. Uh, lastly, it does have a cover, so it's got a cover built into it, a lens cover, which is nice, but if you're used to one without a lens cover, like the other day I found myself bringing it up and going, crap, and then you've got to <laughs> open the cover. 
One good thing about the cover is it does flip all the way back. So if you're getting, putting it up on a bag, let's say, which is really how I'm going to run this thing. I'm not going to run it on my tripod mounted like I had the uh, Kilo 5. I'm going to run this with a bag on the tripod, and I'll show you that set up here in a second. But that way you can just flip this back, set it down, and you're good to go. So that's a good overview of the uh, outside, and it does come with a lanyard. You can take, get, get through a little uh, notch here and wear it around your neck or whatever you want to do. So let's move on to some of the more specific features of the Revic BR4. All right, well, this thing has a ton of features in it. Uh, it can handle up to 10 profiles. So I actually loaded my 6mm BRA Sierra Match King profile into my smartphone, which is an Android, and then I can sync this up to the rangefinder. So it's it's kind of like a Kestrel in that in that manner is I can sync this up to this. Now this has everything in it that it needs. And as I range, it'll just use that profile. You can take into effect uh, spin drift, the Coriolis effect, all the different things that you could do in a Kestrel you can do with this. The app will update from a nearby weather station. Uh, I can uh, true this rangefinder so it has truing capability. That means if I get out to the range and I'm truing my dope and I have to make some adjustments in either the uh, BC or velocity, uh, I can do that in the app and it will transfer it into the rangefinder or I can do it directly in rangefinder. So this has a lot of features and I've got a list here. I don't want to I don't want to miss anything. Uh, scanning mode, it does have the scanning mode so you can hold the fire button down and just scan your targets and it'll just scan from target to target. The way that you're going to run this thing generally is on the near setting, near target setting, because <clears throat> what'll happen there is, let's say you've got a, let's say you've got a, a, you saw in the video in the beginning, some of those uh, uh, targets at the 500 yard berm were up against a berm. Well, the berm might be another yard or two behind those. And what you'll do with this is you'll start at the top of the target and you'll bring it down. So it may pick up 505, 504, and then all of a sudden you'll hit the target and it'll pick up that 500 yard target. The best way that I'm seeing, and a lot of other guys are doing this, uh, to really get stable with these things is use a bag. Now this is that, uh, my tripod set up with my binoculars that I showed you in another video. My binoculars would sit here and what I did is I had a cheese plate that I was left over from some of my other video stuff. So I just mounted that on this side. And then I'm going to use this flat bag. This is a wee bad um, uh, flat bag. I'm going to use this, put it right here. And now I'm set. Now when I get there, I just open this up, set it on there. And it's very, very stable. This is extremely stable. It's not moving anywhere. Before I was having to adjust this, uh, this knob down here and kind of fidget with it and get things uh, set up, but this is going to work very well for me. So that's how I'm going to set that. I already told you I've got this set for the near setting, which again means that it's going to pick up the nearest, the near target uh, as I'm uh, scanning. The other thing that they're telling you, and I think I just said this, come down on your target and you'll, you'll pick it up easier. And I found that to be true even at the 22 range. Uh, when I, was, I started high, I'd come down low and I'd pick the target right up. So uh, 4,000 yard ranging. The, another thing I like about this is it's a 10X magnification. A lot of other range finders are 7X. That extra 3X just gets you a little out there closer to the, to the target. Um, I talked about the truing capability, all that other stuff. Uh, I do like the app. This app is really cool. And again, as I just said, it syncs up with your uh, Revic, with your BR4. It's got a profile manager, the ballistics calculator, uh, the weather. So again, it picks up a local weather station and then it's got the truing capability. And there's some really good videos out on their website. Uh, they walk you through all of this, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview here and, uh, and kind of 
talk about some of the capabilities. Look, based on the features and functionality of the Revic BR4, uh, I'm sold. I like it. It's really nice. Uh, better than the other two? Absolutely. Uh, were the other two junk? No, they were good range finders. Uh, the 1800 and the Kilo 5. But I, I did, I will say I did find with the Kilo 5, I didn't use probably 80% of the functionality that was built into it. And I'm going to be very honest with you, I probably won't use 80% of the functionality built into this. I want a range finder. I want something that when I press that button and I hit that target, I have confidence in it. And I had confidence with the Kilo 5 out to about five, 600 yards. But once past that, I was having to kind of wonder if it was giving me the right reading or not. And at the 22, yard, uh, 22 long rifle range, it was doing a good job on the larger targets further out. On the smaller targets, again, I was having to kind of guess, and then I'd ask someone else, what did you range? And they'd get something different. So I was, I was basically just trusting someone else's range finder and not mine. This thing's picking everything up that I've hit with it so far. And I mean a, you know, one and a half inch target at 120 yards or 100 yards rather. This thing picked it up flawlessly. The app integration, I like that. And I'm probably going to use it and I'll tell you why. If my Kestrel ever goes down, I want to have a backup plan. And this will then become my backup plan. You could literally use this as your Kestrel if you plugged in all the wind, uh, it has all that ballistics capability that I just talked about uh, in it. So you could use this as a backup to your uh, exact Kestrel instrument. So with all that said, I love it. Got some other things coming up. Uh, annealing machine, trimming machine. Probably going to do a, uh, a mandrilling video. Once mandrilled, twice mandrilled uh, brass. See if there's any difference there. I think there is. And... Uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone, and until next time, shoot straight.